Hi everyone, my name is Audrey Rothbar and I'm going to be creating a website centered around the symbiotic nature of digital technology and art history. I think there's a misconception on what art history is. Some people think it's worshiping old paintings of Jesus and dead European kings. Some think it's analyzing hieroglyphics. Some think it's looking at paintings, just saying, I don't like that color purple. To some extent, it's all of these things, which I think is what makes it so amazing. Art encompasses social and political movements, religious teachings, technology, mathematics, chemistry, and has been connected with the advent of many digital technologies as a tool for rulers throughout history. So to me, all art can be best described as propaganda in one form or another. The idea of all art as propaganda is important in understanding my website as I aim to remove the stigma around studying the arts and create a more inclusive, less elitist space for budding artists. Many of these young artists have grown up in a digital world where reproduction and reposts, sharing and receiving content has given everyone a voice. Standardized digital tools such as Adobe design software have become a major part of functioning in a world that exists partially online. And art tutorials and guides have been increasingly more available to everyone. This idea of accessibility and variety seems to contrast sharply with the canon of what's considered academic art in the Western world. So I wanted to share my presentation with you. Just a quick few slides. Um, there we go. <laughs> so this is my proposal. My mission statement, um, my goal is to build a platform for discourse surrounding multimedia art and everything that surrounds it from an art historical standpoint, technological development, politics, culture, social movements. I wanna teach people how to use digital technology to create art, aiding in accessibility. I think it's really important to allow everyone to have the same kind of accessibility to these resources. Um, I want to teach people how prevalent art is in our everyday lives, and I want to remove the elitist element that intimidates so many people from getting involved. History of the digital medium. Uh, the website's going to feature video art analyses spanning across history and geography, uh, blog posts on how the digital medium has changed the art world. We're going to be talking about political ramifications, so things like memes, social media, and the banning of content which might be reminiscent of images like this. I don't know if you guys remember, but this image was banned in Russia because of Vladimir Putin's personal political views. We're also gonna be talking about high art institutions and how digital media is becoming a tool for decolonization. Uh, and I chose to include this GIF because I think that the creation and propagation of this GIF embodies how digital technology can make art more relatable, accessible, memorable, and therefore powerful. Someone who sees this image in passing is way more likely to stop and interact with it and think about it for longer than they would if it weren't animated. So memes, as silly as it sounds, meme culture resembles a digital kind of data post-impressionist art movement. It's the use of mass produced imagery in a satirical nonsensical way. Everyone has encountered art history within meme culture, whether you know it or not. So I brought in some examples. You got the Monday Lisa. And you catch your reflection and you know you look good. And why though? <laughs> so COVID-19 has obviously had some major impacts on the art world and the use of digital technology in assisting the art world. So with the forced closure of many museums and galleries due to the global pandemic, many have digitized collections and developed virtual tours. These tours can be videos, they can be VR, they can be interactive. So like I was saying before, that offers a much more personal and relatable experience that someone's much more likely to internalize for a long time. So I just want to share this quick little video. Hey guys, what's up? I'm John Philippe and today I will show you my crib. Follow me. Every king gotta have his crown, right? So, welcome to the palace, aka the Palace of Versailles. As the French could say, the Chateau de Versailles. By the way, shout out to the last tenant. 
Let's start with a bang. The Royal Opera House. I like to think that this place is my personal home cinema. Opera and chill, you know. <laughs> now, follow me to the King's Bed. Wake up here like every morning, so like, wow. Let's keep moving, shall we? Whoa. So this is the famous Hall of Mirrors. 357 mirrors, 17 windows, you know, just looking. This is my favorite one. She's pretty special. A sculpture recovered from the Roman times. She spent a lot of time in the Louvre, but now she's back in my crib. Time is up. That's it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed my crib. So that was a video produced by Google Arts and Culture, which is Google's art and culture blog, obviously. Um, but I just thought it was really important because it shows how digital technology is not only modernizing art, but making it more accessible during a pandemic when all of these facilities are closed and also bringing another element of, another dimension to the art by allowing people to interact with it in a more realistic way. As you could see from this video, using the VR headset, he was able to see 3D images of sculptural pieces that don't have the same effect in a 2D rendered image, like a photo. So that's something that I'm gonna to be touching on a lot. So everyday uses of art. Every piece of media, information, and data that you consume has been edited by an artist in some way to evoke some sort of reaction from you as the viewer. Technology analyzes, categorizes, and targets each person with ads and campaigns, making this art propaganda even more effective. Tag bubbles, music, themes, and even the colors used in the production and execution of this ad are intentional. Um, and I'm, I'm really going to try to talk about color theory and how that factors into marketing and advertising and how digital media and digital technology play into this. I'll stop sharing for a second. I also want my blog posts to discuss some real world application for this knowledge, seeing as my blog is aimed at helping young artists. I'm going to be blogging about how marketing and advertising use these kind of strategies like color theory and the digital media that they use in order to manipulate the viewer with their propaganda to produce a certain result, telling you to buy something or subscribe. This will both aid the readers as consumers of these products as well as in their professional careers where they will be the workforce. I hope this presentation got you all a little excited about what you're going to be seeing from my blog, and I can't wait to get your feedback. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more.